Hello, and welcome to VOW, Voices of Wisdom, the show that might not be for everybody, but everybody needs to watch this show. It is great being back with my LTV family. I have been away on vacation for a bit, but I'm glad to be back. And I'm going to start off with the uh, basic the, um, theme or the mission of our show. It says, relationships are everything and universal simply because they are all that exist. Nothing has meaning until you decide how it relates to you and how you relate to it. It is the process of making these associations that will determine the outcome of our experiences in life. And before I introduce my guests, I'm going to talk about um, domestic violence. Domestic violence, also known as intimate partner violence can happen to anyone, regardless of gender, race, ethnicity, sexual orientation, income, or other factors. The victims, one in four women will experience domestic violence during her lifetime. One in four. Women experience more than four million physical assaults and rapes because of their partners. And men are victims of nearly 3 million physical assaults. Women are more likely to be killed by an intimate partner than men. Women ages 20 to 24 are the greatest risk of becoming victims of domestic violence. Every year, one in three women who are a victim of homicide is murdered by current or former partners. This is, has to do with the families. Every year, more than 3 million children witness domestic violence in their homes. Children who live in homes where there is domestic violence also suffer abuse or neglect as high rates, 30% to 60%. A 2005 Michigan study found that children exposed to domestic violence at home are more likely to have health issues, including becoming sick more often, having frequent headaches, stomach aches, and being more tired and lethargic. In 2003 study found that children are more likely to intervene when they witness severe violence against a parent, which can place a child at risk as well, and sometimes even death. The circumstances. Domestic violence is more likely to happen between 6 p.m. and 6 a.m. More than 60% of domestic violence incidents happen at home. The consequences. According to U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development, domestic violence is the third leading cause of homelessness among families. In New York City, 25% of homeless head of households become homeless due to domestic violence. Survivors of domestic violence face high rates of depression, sleep disturbances, anxieties, flashbacks, and other emotional stress. I have a few more statistics, but I'm, right now I'm going to do a quote. It says, from every wound there is a scar, and every scar tells a story a story that says, I have survived. I have a return guest, and she is a survivor, and her name is Nicole Martin. Oh, yes, Welcome. How are you, love? Good, thank you. Yeah, and it's time to um, put a voice to domestic violence. We have had so many issues, and you, you shared your story, you have shared your story with us several times. You can go on YouTube, to see the beginning of her story and another um, show we did with her. And um, I'm excited to share some of the great things that are happening in your life. And also we're gonna talk about some of your process you're still having in the court. But also right now what I wanna do is show a quick clip of you being interviewed, which I think is so unique. And so we're gonna watch this clip. I will always be thankful for Dr. Trinidad, my family. She made it possible for me to come home 
and continue on with life. In 2011, I went to the emergency room because I didn't feel well. My equilibrium was off. Things were coming at me 3D. The emergency room physician told me that he knew, well, after they did um, a, sc a CAT scan of the brain and they saw what they saw, he said that um, I'm gonna need brain surgery. And he said he knows this really, this really good surgeon. They admitted me. When she entered the room, I knew that I was in good hands. And the reason why I say that is because she came in with a huge smile. That showed me that she was, she was a person before a surgeon. And this, it helps the patients because it comforts them. Because of course now I'm scared. I, I don't know what the outcome is gonna be. Brain surgery is a serious surgery. Any surgery is serious, but once, I mean brain, just the, the word alone is self-explanatory. So she came in, she introduced herself. And I think at the time I had some family members there as well. And she, you know, she gave them a little background, us a background of herself. And, she, and after, shortly after she left, so I was relieved. There was a mass on, on the left side of my brain. And she said, she said, Nicole, I'm gonna be frank with you. And, <laughs> and I said, that's all I, I ask of you. I don't know how large it was or how small, but it caused a lot of damage. And for the simple fact that it was resting on my main artery, well, she said that it could have been there for a while. They checked the specimen, it was analyzed and everything, and it was benign. So my diagnosis was um, benign meningioma, I think that's how it's pronounced. The surgery went well, as you can see, I'm here. My angel got sent an angel. The practice, I give it an A+. Plus. Plus, plus. <laughs> Dr. Kern, he stopped in and spoke with me. He took off the dressing and took out my stitches. Hilarious, because he, he made jokes. He was, he, again, a, a good person, because he, this comforts the patient, because it's just, we're thinking everything, like, oh God, this, is, this can't be me. This is how my life is gonna be. But see, they, they come to you, they display their people skills, and I appreciate her team. And, Dr. Kern for coming and making me laugh, although my head was jacked up. <laughs> First, when your body talks to you, listen, because I ignored those symptoms for a while, and right away, go and see what it is, because it, it can save your life. Dr. Trinidad, each and every time I visit her, I bring her flowers, because flowers are to be given to someone when they're living, so they can smell that pleasant aroma. We celebrate life together because I know this is the person that was sent to keep me. I love Dr. Trinidad. So that was a great interview. Thank you. And Dr. Trinidad, so you still obviously keep in relationship with her? Yes. And for just to update, that was perhaps from the domestic violence abuse that caused? Yes. The thing is, I want to elaborate on that. Okay. Because I hadn't seen uh, a doctor or anything about what I had gone through or the punch, mm -hmm. regarding the punch. Mm -hmm. So it's not documented right. that because I didn't go to the hospital or the emergency room when after he punched me. Because I'm, you know. But, you know, that's why you have the voice now and you are the voice for domestic violence because you have experienced what you've experienced and you can help people and help women and men, if, the, if that's the case, but mainly women mm -hmm. who will maybe not sit back and be afraid to report this. Right. And let them know why they should report it. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Stand silent will only help the enemy remove them from this earth. Right, right. And when I say not being documented, like I said, it wasn't documented. Mm -hmm. Although um, Dr. Trinidad did say that the punches did aggravate whatever was there. Mm -hmm. It could have been there. Mm -hmm. She doesn't know. Mm -hmm. But whatever was there, it the punches definitely aggravated the, right. the right. mass that was there. Right, right. But like I said, it when someone is being abused, they 
have to have it documented. Absolutely, absolutely. Like I said, you're going through now even the court system. Mm -hmm. And we're going to talk a little bit about that craziness, because it's crazy. Mm -hmm. and, and we really need to find more people who are able to step up in the court and advocate for people like you. Give us just a brief, I know it's been a long journey, but give us highlights right now of what you're dealing with and things that you can share with the audience about the process. First, I want to say just fight. Mm -hmm. Fight for what you know is right. You are the voice for your children. Mm -hmm. I fought to have my custody visitation taken to trial. And that's because I was requesting that the visitation be supervised because the other individual has issues. And things that were, things that were being, that happened didn't sit right with me, which is why I requested supervised. Mm -hmm. But the judges, law guardians, all of the court officials, staff members, whatever, they aren't trained well enough to deal with these cases because the law guardian, she was to contact the schools and I guess whatever, gather whatever information to build the case mm -hmm. for the children. She's the children's lawyer. Mm -hmm. Come to find out she didn't even speak to the teacher, although she said that she had spoken to them and the teachers didn't see a need as to why, well, well they, didn't, they didn't see a concern. Mm. So why does the, the, the visitation should be supervised? Whatever she said, come to find out she had, she had never spoken to the teachers because the teachers told me. Wow. And they wrote notes to me expressing the changes that they had seen in the children since the visitation had occurred. Really? With their father. Mm -hmm. But the law guardian, she wouldn't even say whatever. They would go in there and have their own conferences without myself and the defendant, mm -hmm. whatever, which is their father. Mm -hmm. So I had no idea what was being said mm -hmm. or what wasn't being said. And they would make their own little whatever. They're, they're coming with their own decision. So let's, let's make sure we let the audience understand. So that process was to authorize or not authorize visitation rights for the children, for the, for the father. Is that what you're saying, why they should have been talking to the teachers? Because of the letter that I had gotten from them. Well, now what was this letter? It, it, it's, it pretty much was saying that they had observed changes in the children's okay. uh, behavior. So this is the letter you got from academics. the school. Mm -hmm. from, so, from, that, so that triggered the, uh, your, your children's attorney to go to talk to the teachers to prove so that? For, right. Hmm. But what happened, the individual, the law guardian, called the school. And she spoke to um, an aide or whatever, uh, a clerk, mm -hmm. and they relayed the message that she had called and did you send a letter to, well, in the child's book bag? Yes. Okay, thank you. And that was that, that was the end of that. Also, I, like I said, I requested that my case go to trial because I was trying to prove my case. They didn't want to take the trial. So I did a little research, or a friend of mine, she sent me some uh, literature. Mm -hmm. and we found out there's a law that they have, they have to look into a case or take a case to trial when it's um, domestic violence, when it's related. Mm -hmm. Custody visitation, when all that is, is a combination, all, all that stuff is going on. So, but when I said, because I had a legal aid representation, mm -hmm. I didn't have money to pay for it. Mm -hmm. And that's a whole nother yeah, and level of information that we can have another show on that. Yeah, so that right, exactly. <laughs> that right there is, 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 that posed a problem right there alone, especially mm -hmm. when the other party has a hired attorney. Right. So now they, you know, everything wants to, it has to be like rushed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then they, they don't think that you know. So now when you inform them that you are aware of certain laws, then they kind of get, I don't know, they, 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 they hold the grudge mm -hmm. in, in, you know, in, in a nice, nice way of putting mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. But I guess I kept pushing, I kept pushing. Eventually he went to trial, but again, things weren't accurate and his attorney tried to stick me on dates, which yeah, I, got, I already explained to, made it known 
that my memory did fail me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The judge even stopped at one point and said, look, she already you know, made it known that her memory, because of the brain surgery, she can't recall or whatever. So I had to bring my calendar. But it was all about dates mm -hmm. and times. OK, but let's look at it yeah. for what the real problem is. Right, 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 right. Now, this individual was, when he did have visitation with the kids, oh, he, he, he would tell them crazy, like just all kind of craziness. Your mommy tried to kill you when you, went, when you were in her belly. She didn't want you. He had my son sleeping on the floor in another room. Oh, I mean, they came back with headaches. But like I said, the, the, the judges, law guardians, all of them need to be trained to handle cases like this. So this is why it's so great that you are advocating, you are the voice for domestic violence. Because I think a lot of, and I think, uh, I think one show we had at the very beginning, I shared my story how I had was trying to make sure I didn't go through any kind of abuse, and so I was trying to get an order of protection, and they just ignored me because I didn't look like I was being abused. I didn't come in with a black eye or a busted lip. Mm -hmm. So they looked at me like, you know, go about your business. Mm -hmm. You know, then later on I find out that they're saying that women were making up stories. Mm -hmm. So against this man. So I think times have changed since then. But as, I mean, that was like, I'm going to date myself again. That's like, geez, <laughs> that was maybe 30 years ago, really. Mm -hmm. And so here we are in 2014, and you're telling me these stories. So something has to be done in the court system to change to have you know, have you been represented the proper way? And not only that, not only you as, as, as the, the individual have to go back and forth to court, but more, than, more so than for your children. Mm -hmm. You know, it's really, really critical at this point. But tell us some more, so to go on a, a high note now, tell us some things that you've done, you know, that you're doing now, you know, as an advocate and a voice for domestic violence. I mean, I still go out and I hand out my flyers, like, the interview that we have conducted in still are, obviously it helps mm -hmm. because a lot of survivors don't have the opportunity that I have. Mm -hmm. So when I do get it, I try and do as much with it mm -hmm. just to raise awareness. Mm -hmm. um, trying to get on with my life, I, like I said, I do what was planned for me. Mm -hmm. I've written a book. That's right. Now, what is the name of the book that you wrote? Venomous Minds. Mm. Now, this book I wrote in 2002, but I hadn't published it, but I am now. It's in the process of being published. My hope is to encourage not only women, but parents mm. to guide their children. Because mm -hmm. I, I can honestly say a lot that I went through is because of how I was raised. And that's, you know, we can touch on that just a little bit. Now, what do you mean by that? Just a little bit. Touch on that, how you were raised. What do you mean by that? I mean, I know they did the best that they could, mm -hmm. but a lot was left out. Yeah, we'll say that. We'll say that. And I can relate. Go when, ahead. when a teen is, when a, a teenager needs a lot mm. of guidance, mm -hmm. support, mm -hmm. I, didn't, I didn't have that. Mm -hmm. Luckily, I was a wise young lady, mm -hmm. but I still fell, I got mm -hmm. lost somewhere mm -hmm. and along the way. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I, at some point in my adult life, I regretted it, but then I had to realize that it wasn't, it wasn't meant for me, whatever mm -hmm. that I had planned mm -hmm. for myself. Mm -hmm. Yes, I, a couple of years ago I had brain surgery, but you know what? I'm here. Yeah. I have five children. Whatever was then, was then. What I have in front of me, is, is, it is better, and it's going to get better. And on that note, we have three of them in the studio. We want to give them a shout-out, and you can give them a shout-out to their names. What's their names? Johannes. Johannes. Messiah and UC Jr. And the other two children are named? Syria, which is in Mexico. Have fun. Hey. And Hassani, which is that attract me. Awesome. Awesome. Love you, babies. <laughs> I just My wanted buddies. to put that plug because I love kids and <laughs> I think it's important that we include them and let them know how important they are in this story. Mm -hmm. And, you know, as you continue, you're doing such an awesome job in spite of all that you've been through. And you are, again, the face and the voice of domestic violence. 
And as you continue to write your book, and oh, that's right, you have to also give us your, um, your website. You have a website that you built, and I believe your children help you even build that website. Yep, one says to my surgery, they, oh, mommy, you know, do your own thing. I said, look, I can't remember my password. Just help me out. Yeah, yeah. So the, the site is um, smilesforthefuture1.com. But like they, they helped me a lot. These, those jokers gave me my medication. Wow. They gave me food. Never mind, I didn't see what was on the plate. I have a joke for you, too, because my daughter made something. Okay. And I said, what, what is that? And she said, oh, my bad. It's supposed to be French toast. But I didn't even know what it was anyway. <laughs> but they fed me. Wow. Bathed me. Wow. Meanwhile, this individual that I was married to was right next to me. Really? And he said, I didn't know I was going to have to be doing this at, at 40 years old. Maybe 70, but not 40. Wow. And I said... What is it saying? Um, for better, for worse? Yes, yes. That joke didn't even want to bathe me. But he's talking about 40. I turned 43. Just March 10th. Hmm. People don't tell age like you. Don't know why. Each year is a blessing. That's right. That's right. So Absolutely. So tell, you, tell your age. I'm 58. <laughs> I'll be 59 in June, okay? <laughs> you made me say my age. <laughs> Each year is a blessing. Yes, yes. Definitely. And, you know, the more we... Um, talk about our past and, and the way we have survived and overcome is such a blessing to others because there's so many people out there I know that's gone through what we've gone through or gone through what you've gone through and they feel hopeless. Mm -hmm. But hearing and seeing you and hearing your surviving stories is such a, a hope for so many people, you know, and I, every time I think of, you know, when I first met you, and actually, when we first met, was in the studio. Mm -hmm. And so that was one of my, I have to say, you know, not against any of my other guests who I've loved, that was one of my best shows. Because it was so raw. Mm -hmm. We had no script. It was just kind of like, it was, it was just very heart to heart. Yeah, that's because it came from the heart. It did. Once it comes from the heart, yeah. everything else is going to be all right. Yeah. That's, how I, that's what I know. It was great. It was mm -hmm. really good. And... The thing, the other thing that I, you know, um, I'm going to say is it says most domestic, most domestic violence incidents are never reported. Mm -hmm. And I believe it because I, after the punch, maybe I reported him maybe once, but the punch is when, yes, okay, I had to report it because my head was, like I said, it was in a lot of pain. It was swollen and everything. And I was like, I, I couldn't go to work. Mm. I had to call out like right when I was about to, when I should have been at work. Mm. But I'm there trying to nurse my head. And I'm like, this, is, this, this ain't sexy. I can't go to work looking like this. <laughs> but like all of the, 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 the incidents in the past, I never really called because, you know, he was always sorry. That's, they, they, they're going to apologize. They're going to apologize to the point where you're like, you know what, buddy? You know, that, that's another thing that um, I think this important um, as we as women, that we have to really get to that place where we love ourselves mm -hmm. and know the value of who we are. Because if we don't, we allow stuff like this to continue to happen to exactly. us. You know, and I know we're not the only ones. You know, there's so many women out there and we do this over and over again. And finally, sometimes we do get it. Mm -hmm. But sometimes it's so then so hard to undo and heal and go through all that changes to get back or get to the place where we should have been. Yeah, the damage is already done. The damage is done. To undo it. Yes. And it's hard. It's very hard. But you gotta stay strong. And we can do it. That's right. I'm gonna read this. It says, don't hold on, and this is talking to women now. Don't hold on because you think there'll be no one else. There will always be someone else. You've got to believe you are worth more than being repeatedly hurt by someone who doesn't really care. And believe that someone will see what you are really worth and treat you the way you should be treated. That's right. And that's how that's what we're going to leave on that note. And that's something that... Um, on the flip side of all of this, I think that's the bottom line mm -hmm. of when it comes down to allowing domestic violence. Because basically, a man can only do to you what you allow them to do. Yep. 
Oh, believe me, I heard. I was a fool. And, and I that's, was all that. we all been there. We all been there, Nicole. We all have been there. Mm -hmm. But we are survivors, and we will continue to encourage women and encourage to give them hope. So if you have one last thing you want to say. I can only encourage women, others, but I really fight for my women. Mm -hmm. But I can honestly tell you that God is the true counselor because without him, I would not be here talking to you today. That is my father. Forget all the rest. <laughs> and that's the real. That is the real. Mm -hmm. Well, again, it's wonderful to have you on my show. And when your Thank book you. comes out, I'm going to give you a ring. You're going to come back, and we're going to talk about Venomous. Venomous Minds. Venomous Minds. Because mm -hmm. just tell us a little quick. We got 20 seconds almost. Young black teen growing up in Brooklyn, New York, ah. without the guidance that she should have had. But it's okay because she made it. And it's based on a true story. Wow. I can't wait. Might be a series. Oh, that's going to be great. <laughs> and maybe even a movie. Yeah, hey. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't no stopping us. That's right. Ain't no stopping us. Ain't no stopping us. This has been Val, Voices of Wisdom. Thank you, and have a wonderful day.